We're gonna get matching on this. You can cry on camera. So we came in on a Tuesday night to get a tattoo. We have Elvia Guadin, Mexican tattoo artist. She is originally from Guadalajara, lives in New York, trains with Marcelo Garcia guys, tattoos a lot of famous jiu-jitsu people. She comes to Austin regularly for tattoo conventions. I finally uh, was injured enough to be able to take some time off. Nicky Rod broke my back. I will say I did heel hook him that round though, so I consider it a victory. We're committing to my Mexican heritage. We're putting the uh, eagle on the snake. And most importantly, <clears throat> we're committing to the new merchandise here. The B Team t-shirt, this is basically the logo off of that. Not committed enough to get the B on my body, but again, fully committed to this merchandise. We put up a fake video, Gabby Garcia tattoo on my butt. Obviously we didn't do it. When the contract gets signed for that match, I will 100% do it. And I'm even thinking of stepping it up a notch. If there's anyone in Texas that could physically brand me with that on my butt cheek, Gabby's name, I will get that done and we'll film that as well. The snake represents Nikki Ryan. And obviously I represent the big beautiful eagle. Craig has a history of getting awful tattoos. You know, he has a, an octopus on his ribs with, with Arte Suave, which just looks awful. And uh, he's kept it going with this new, new eagle and snake tattoo. Clearly, Craig is the snake, while the rest of us are the eagles, because fuck Craig Jones. Beautiful artwork, but a bit of a hidden meaning. For us, B-Team, the cool guys were the eagle, and Craig Jones is the snake coming from above to, you know, crush his little snaky ass. Clearly it's a bit of a plagiarized logo from our uh, Street X merchandising, but uh, it's okay. You know, he can steal it if he wants. He's uh, stolen a few other things in his life. Basically representing of a hand job he once got from a bird. So that's the true meaning behind it. That's good, that's good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New camera guy in the house. I, I already oh. pressed the button, I, I wasn't sure. Red button. Record. How do I know it's going? Oh, okay, okay. All right, Jay Rizzle, how's your day going, buddy? Tell me about your experience today at uh, B2. Now I'm awkward. I'm not I'm used to Tony being the one talking. He's going good. The camera guy. Yeah. Going well. I think you have a big head, but you'll grow into it. I just need. Look at that thing. Bro. I just need a haircut. This thing is massive. Haircut. Look at this. Try to wear my hat. Look at this. No, no, no! Don't force it on there. <laughs> this is how it fits. Oh my god. You look 14 again. Uh, you only have fucking. Like a three snaps kind of guy. Yes, yes. Oh, that's still. It still doesn't fit. Shit, shit. You got a GH belly, a GH head. <laughs> My hat barely fits him. Look at, look. No, no, no. Don't squeeze it on there. No, don't squeeze it on there. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Stupid. Ryan, I got a lot of hair though. That fits him. You got big ass hair, Jay. I haven't had a haircut. I haven't had a haircut. No, no. Your head's more wide. That's what I said. It's like a block. A Lego. <laughs> a Lego. Lego. Yeah, yeah, like a Lego. <laughs> Fuck you guys. You're a Lego. <laughs> <laughs> the resemblance is just uncanny. I got a better tan. <laughs> <laughs> I got a point in front of me. He reaches. I grab the lace over the tricep. Pull that leg towards me. We get shooting. Setting up. He resists. I look to run the pipe. He resists that. Immediately, I'll transfer to the hip. Tricep oh, and the trap and look to get behind my opponent. So we look to take him one way by running the pipe, he resists, and we take him back the opposite direction. Pull the leg to me, step foot the foot, shooting, pressuring him backwards. He resists, run the pipe, he resists that. And switch positions, take the back. One more time, pulling that lead leg, shooting, off balance again. Looking to run this. One, two, three. No. I only lift a little bit. No. One. You're lifting weights? Are you serious? No. Yes, he is. <laughs> I just went home. We have weights at home. <laughs> how much? How much? How heavy? It's just like 40 pounds. 40 pounds? 40 pounds? Are you crazy? It's a dumb Dude. 
Dude, he's lifting 40. Bro, four pounds. Did you say four or 40? 40. 40. Is this bad? Yes. <laughs> just fucking do a few squats, put it up here. He's like, <laughs> come on, man. All the mistakes. I did and nothing wrong. I kept, I kept my arm just like this. Sit ups. Just right oh, away. Dude, but like, one arm plank for like 25 seconds. <laughs> and then like slowly like that's more go down. Than, than squatting. I, if I give out on the plank, I'm fucked. <laughs> you, can, what, you, can't, you can't just do like like this with your, with your <laughs> like this. Look. Yeah. No, don't do it. I'm scared. You're fine. See? Fall for YouTube. Oh, no, 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 no. Slowly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There you go. See? And where's the sling? I'm not, I'm not wearing the sling. Where's the sling? Jay, Jay, show us your stomach. Show us your stomach. It was, it was rough yesterday. I had some cupcakes. Two tree cupcakes. <laughs> you had four, dude. I, I did have four. He <laughs> <laughs> was watching me on the, on the security <laughs> footage. <laughs> Hand fighting sequence, pretty much like a 101 hand fighting sequence to her naked, I'd say off the back. Dropping him on the strangle arm, you just switch the right arm underhook to a right arm strangle using foot to foot pressure and uh, some pretty straightforward hand fighting. So we're gonna start as if it's EBI overtime here. We're gonna start with our seatbelt in the center, our hooks in the center. Okay, and as whatever you're thinking, the ref's saying go, you move your seatbelt over to the far side, okay, to the overhook side. You use your forearm posting on his collarbone here to get your feet weightless for a second, get your feet to the outside of his far hip. So you could use that in combination with the seatbelt moving across to get a good angle on the guy. You wanna get your body underneath his shoulder and the mat, between his shoulder and the mat here. Okay, if you fall without that angle, okay, he's gonna to start to be a lot more heavy than he would otherwise be. If you can get this good angle with your seatbelt off to the side, your chest underneath his shoulder, between his shoulder and the mat, and your head between his shoulder and the mat. Everything centered, squared up. The ref says go right away. You move your seatbelt off so you can push your forearm on the top of his collarbone. You swivel your feet to the outside, and you get that good angle here where it's way harder for him to get his back and head and shoulders to the mat. All right, once you get that down, you're gonna use this foot to foot here to, to uh, switch the strangle arm on him and drop him on your right arm, which is gonna turn it into the strangle arm. We're foot to foot. We pummel our hand in, we get a cross grip. Okay, we wrap uh, a cross grip here so our thumb and middle finger are touching. Now we use a foot to foot to raise his weight off my right arm so I could extract, park it here, and then drop him on the strangle arm. When I drop him on the strangle arm, I set my elbow in the mat so that it's not, I'm not using my arm strength, I'm using the mat here as like a stopper with my elbow. Okay, and I push with the inside of my thigh and the inside of my left bicep 
and the releasing of the foot to foot. So if I release foot to foot pressure, he drops. I'm gonna add in pushing with my thigh and bicep. So all that together gets him dropping to the other side of my head. I move my head up and rest it on his. I hide my fingers behind my chin, touching the back of his neck. Now I use this forearm to get in the way of his. He goes to reach for my right hand here. I use my forearm and my face here to block that grip. And then once I'm ready, once my arm is long enough, my right arm is ready to strangle, I release, post the shoulder, adjust, deepen my elbow, and fit in for a good strangle. I park it here right next to his jaw, set my elbow on the mat, and then I drop him on the strangle arm. I release the foot to foot, push with the inside of my thigh and my left bicep. I move my head across and I use my forearm to get in the way of his grip. I rest my head on his and I get my face in the way of his grip. He goes up and down, trying to get into my forearm here. I block a few times, touch the back of his neck with my fingers, post the shoulder, deepen my strangle arm, and then finish a good strangle. All right, one, two, three. Best back control and back escapes in the world right here, That's guys. That's right. Pay attention, pay attention. I have to go up and then over his. And he can get his head to the mat, he can reach up, it's a pain in the ass. But if I'm way up here, now my, my arm length starts right here. It's like the shortest distance. Think about, you have to draw a circle around his neck. What's the smallest circle you're gonna need to cover? Right, if I'm down here, I gotta draw a circle from the shoulder. So it's up, then down, then around. I'm not gonna, look, I can't reach very far. Right, but if I'm all the way up here, suddenly I could reach way further. Right, but, but if I'm too far, now I'm drawing a circle from here, so like I can only reach here, right? Keeping your hips a little bit higher, does that affect the control you have? Yeah, so if I'm, if I'm high like this, it makes it harder for him to bridge to the other side, right? Uh, but it makes it kind of harder for me to strangle because my shoulder is starting from way too, way too high. If, uh, if I'm too low here, if I'm too low, let's just give me a good normal back control here. See, if, if I'm too low like this, then first of all, it's harder to strangle. Second of all, you could bridge up above my head and get to either side. So you could get to that side easier. I can't go, go to that side again. I can't, I can't block him with my knee anymore. He's just gonna go, he's gonna roll over and he can get his back to the mat here. It's just, it's too, too much to control. His body's too strong. I need this hook and my knee is gonna be able to put the brakes if he bridges to that side. See, my knee can go and then I can start grabbing my, my shin here, right? And if he wants to go to this side, I can no, no, go, go to this side. I can stop him again with this leg and this leg and the arm. Right? So it gives you just a lot more. To focus on it's it's more control. It's more control. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, water and elements. My element. <laughs> element that he probably.
Ha, ha, ha.